Hi again, Red Hat developers. This is Jason from the Red Hat Developers Program, back at Summit in 2017 in the Dev Zone. Today we have Scott McCarty, who's going to talk to us about achieving DevOps with containers, and he's going to show us three things that people miss. So when you're trying to achieve DevOps, um, you know, uh, a lot of people, you know, you got to get back to the basics of like what the actual problem that you're trying to achieve is, you know, or, or, or solve is. Um, developers and operations essentially have to deliver applications quicker, and, and the applications are more complicated, and they have to collaborate because there are complex interactions between the operations environment and the applications that you're delivering. And hi historically, those have been married in the user space of the operating system, and it was a collaboration that would happen when you first deployed the app, and, an, and a collaboration that would have to happen down the road time after time every time you patch the operating system. And um, so, the, you know, the fact that these are complex is kind of the problem. And so we've tried all these different tools to try to solve that, including configuration management and, uh, and change uh, control, uh, you know, tools and things like that. So the question is, you know, how can containers help, right? Well, number one, what, are, what do people miss? So load applications at the factory. Don't do it at the dock. Historically, if you look at uh, a cloud environment, it's like being on the dock and there's a bunch of ships in the harbor and you're loading the ships with these applications with something like uh, uh, configuration management tools or uh, static images that you've built. Um, and you don't want to wait until you're at the dock to think about things. You want to do it at the factory. Um, you want to think about all the components um, and you don't want to have political battles when you're, when you're trying to do something live you know, in production. You want to think about those ahead of time during business hours and that's what containers help you do. <clears throat> you get to build all of it and, and collaborate on all of those things that you're going to make you know, in, in dev, not in production. And so you want to think about what components like, like trusted sources, like uh, pulling, you know, Red Hat container images from the Red Hat container catalog, um, using Ansible to do, you know, declarative ways of building the images and things like that. And you really want to wait until, you know, you don't want to wait until you're in production to think about that stuff. You want to do that in dev at the factory. Um, the next thing is collaboration, right? So there's a lot of components that go into a container image and just because you are now doing that at the factory. It doesn't mean that you don't have to think about those things. They don't just magically disappear. Um, you still want to build on standardized images, just like you did before when you had core builds. Um, you want to agree on a single definition for the, the application. So you want to use something like Kubernetes or OpenShift templates to actually define the, the links between the applications. And then you, know, you still want to collaborate in a way that's organized. So there are certain libraries in the container image that you're, you, know, you don't really want to have to deal with as a developer. You want to offload those five minutes after that goes into production. You don't want to have to touch it. So things like OpenSSL and glibc and NSS, you don't want to have to patch those. And then you know, finally, when something breaks and it's, it's, it's finicky and it's in production, you don't want to get paged at 2 AM. So you just want to build off of what they have what operations, you know, collaborate with them ahead of time, uh, build at the factory, and then, you know, collaborate on what's inside of, of it. And then finally, you know, this idea that microservices make it easier is not exactly correct. Um, it actually makes things wildly more complicated in that you've got now tons of copies of these apps running everywhere and all the apps are broken into all these little discrete chunks, right? And so making a small change to a chunk is okay. But what happens when you patch a library across an entire cluster in 32 different services? It gets very complicated. So you really have to think in a distributed systems kind of way. So when you're doing that collaboration at the factory with the you know, developers and sysadmins, you want to think in a distributed systems kind of way. You want to think about how can I automatically rebuild these things? How can I automatically schedule um, you know, even, even tools to go out and troubleshoot things at, you know, at, distribute, at, at scale, essentially? And um, you want to you know, test the exact same uh, for example, since you've standardized on a Kubernetes file as the template for your application, that's what ta tells all the containers you know, to talk to each other and how, you want to test that ahead of time in dev also. You don't want to just like, build the app as separate pieces, then in production run it that way, because you will end up running into problems that you didn't foresee. There will be race conditions and things that you didn't foresee. So you want to really like, test that entire stack with the exact application definition and the exact images that you used in dev, and you want to do that ahead of time, right at the factory, in a collaborative way. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, what do you get? You get your app to production faster because you've already solved all these political battles and all these collaboration issues, and you've already decided on what all the components are ahead of time. You've decided how the components interact by using the, the Kubernetes file or OpenShift uh, you know, template. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, you want to be able to move on to the next project, right? You know that once you have those develop, you know, once you have those, the, the, the blueprint for how those components interact done, and you've got testing around the images and the blueprint, you can now move on to whatever the new project is. 
And then finally, you know, when you're troubleshooting it two years down the road, you have compatibility at scale. You know, you don't have to worry about saying, hey, developer, you know, you're, you don't want to get paid at 2 a.m. when you're working on some new project and you have a deadline. At the end of the day, you want the sysadmins to be able to handle that. And so those are the three things that I think people miss uh, when they really start to build you know, applications and containers. So thank you.